All right, we're on. So um, I really appreciate you guys um, hopping in on this. I know it was kind of last minute, but um, this is just a technique that I love to do in my personal work. So to introduce myself, I'm Amy Madai, and I am from St. Louis, Missouri, and I teach at in St. Louis and love it. And I've done this technique with them and it it comes out awesome. I am in my garage, so there may be some background noise, so I apologize for that. But um, I also, um, during the pandemic, just um, bit the bullet and decided to, you know, really solidify my pottery business. So my business name is Amy Joy Pottery. And so I'm, I have that on Facebook and Instagram that you can follow as well. Um, there's lots of new work coming out. Um, recently I made this platter and um, these leaves on here are all this slip transfer design. So there's lots of different ways that you can, that you can use this. Now I don't necessarily do something that large with my students, but this might be a better view for you. There we go. Um, there we go. I've done small dishes or even, um, you know, did some surface decoration with mugs with them. You can do it on wheel thrown, hand, hand built, all sorts of stuff. So lots and lots and lots of um, possibilities with this. I even added a little bit of scraffito around the edges. You can incorporate all sorts of surface design techniques with this. So I love it. I think it's versatile and fun. And I feel like um, my students really feel accomplished when they do something like this. So um, to start, I just laid out a couple different supplies that you guys can see here. So I love these mud tool ribs. So the red one is really flexible. And I don't, I mean, you don't have to use mud tools, but um, and the green one is a little bit more stiff. I know there's like a yellow one and I think a blue one in the mix as well. Um, you definitely want some sort of uh, pony roller um, or even just a wooden, a wooden rib. I have a needle tool, some scissors, pencil. Um, and then you can paint any of these things on, but I really like using these squeeze bottles. So something like this or even something like that. I do have the chat open, so if you guys at any time want to, you know, throw a question out there or anything like that, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, I, I definitely want to pass this technique along. A couple artists that I follow on Instagram that do this. The first one, her name is Katie Miller, and she's really the one that inspired me um, to do this. So she does this technique all the time on all sorts of functional wear. And I was really, <laughs> I was kind of geeking out over Christmas. My, my husband um, got me one of her mugs for a present. So I was really excited. And that's inside and I forgot to bring it out, of course. But um, just trying to see if I can see all of you in here, but I don't know if this is gonna work or not. You'd think by now we would be like, virtual teaching pros, but there's always something new that I learn. All right, so this is just normal, you know, newsprint that you can get from any sort of art supply store. I find that this works the best um, just because it's nice and thin. Um, and then I have a nice freshly rolled out slab here. It's really wet. I like to use B-Mix. It's, um, let me look at my box just to make sure, yep. It's Laguna WC609. So I don't know if that makes a difference to you. The artist, Katie Miller, that I follow, she uses a red earthenware sort of type of clay. You can use anything, but just wanted to let you know what I use. Yeah, I love the clay too. So it's, it's really nice, um, strong and durable. And even if you do some sort of scraffito technique into it, it doesn't have that grog. So you're not getting those little nicks and stuff in there. So I drew um, my design initially with pencil, and then I went over the lines with the designer liners. So again, you don't have to 
necessarily buy this brand. You could just get the squeeze bottles and you could fill it up with the stroking coats. You could fill it up with, like I have the, the Mako under, Fundamental underglaze and I actually just filled up my black bottle with this. So um, I just happen to have these. And so that's what I use. So I use the purple one on this one and then the bright green and yellow on that one. Um, you definitely want to keep the little pins that come in them so they don't get all clogged up. Um, to help students from losing the pins, because this always happens, I tell them to have a sponge nearby. You want to make sure you shake it up really well and you can take the pin and use your sponge like a pin cushion. I know you can't really see it in there, but there's the shadow. So it's in there. Um, you always want to shake it down towards the, the tip and I just practice on something before I go in. And I literally just outline the pencil marks. And um, the pencil doesn't necessarily transfer, but if it does, we know that it burns out in the, in the kiln. Um, so Ellen says, do you get the newsprint wet first? I do not. I just um, use it dry, draw on it with pencil and then outline it. And actually my, <laughs> my husband took this into the bathroom and blue dry it really quickly so that the underglaze would dry. Um, so that's something that you could do to speed up the process in your classroom as well, because sometimes I know that it takes a little bit to dry. Um, some of the artists that do this technique, they use slip as opposed to the stroke and coats or the underglaze. So I have this awesome decorating slip and my local like supply store is um, Kruger Pottery, but I know that they ship everywhere and I love all these colors that they have. So you can get them in either size bottle. Um, and that's usually what I paint inside my, my shapes with, I use the slip. You don't want to outline with the slip because it'll dry and flake off. So the underglaze or those designer liners work out best for me. So that's just a tip that I have as well. So these have been sitting for a while. So I'll go ahead and paint them in really quickly and show you how they um, get transferred. So um, you can have students, you know, use paint brushes and um, the underglazes to paint them in. Of course, this isn't working. Okay. I'll use something else. So I have this mint decorating slip in one of these squeeze bottles. So again, this is from Kruger Pottery here in St. Louis. I'm not getting any sort of <laughs> like um, kickback from them. I just really love, love them. I'm sure you guys have your, your favorite sort of supply stores where you are at too. So I just take the, the squeeze bottle, of course, of course. Normally I would take the squeeze bottle and squeeze it all over, but those aren't working and that's okay. So that's why I have the backup. And you, you don't have to do this with slip. You can do it with the underglaze. So I'll do this small one with the slip and then I'll do the larger purple one with some underglaze. I make sure that I go over the underglaze outline and do a pretty thick coat. That's just me though. I mean, I'm sure there's other people out there that say to do a thin coat. I've done this um, with multiple coats. I'm also finishing up my MFA program here in St. Louis at uh, Fontbonne University. And um, I tried this technique with one coat of slip, two coats of slip, three coats of slip, four coats of slip, all sorts of stuff because I was having some cracking and flaking of the slip. And that was super annoying, I'm sure. Let me zoom back. Uh, oops, 
sorry, hit the wrong button. Let me go back to this. There we go. Okay. Let me open the chat. All right, so that's gonna um, dry for just a minute. And under the light, you might be able to see how it's still kind of um, shiny, right? So we want that shine to go away, but we don't want it to dry completely because like I said, the slip will crack and break off. So with this one, I will um, use the stroke and coat. What sorts of glazes do you guys use in your classroom? You can, you can unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat. I just want to make sure, you know, I touch on something that's like relevant to you. So Amco's Powder Choice mostly. Oh my gosh, I love those. And PC Celadons and Underglazes. Okay, yeah. Um, the Powder's Choice, I don't know if that would necessarily work for this technique. Um, I haven't tried it, but I mean, you can always play around with it. The Amco Velvet. For sure, you could definitely use with this technique. The celadons might look really neat. Um, you know, if you if you want to give it a little bit more depth, you could like um, bisque fire it and then use like some celadon over it. So I know the original poster on our our Facebook group said that they were um, having trouble with like the whole image transferring. And I, th I think that's kind of like, I think that's kind of the fun point um, because it doesn't look so precise, but that's just me. Got a bunch of velvets right before the pandemic started. Yeah, that's hard <laughs> to wait. We are actually, we're lucky um, to be back on campus and um you know taking all necessary precautions and stuff like that amco a little pricey on the glazes yep yeah the stroking coats i think go a little bit longer i mean you get more for your money sort of thing the velvets yeah i think are definitely more for i would say like high school age girls all right or students i teach all girls sorry i just say girls so this is still a little a little shiny, a little wet, and of course, like it's raining here in St. Louis. Thank goodness, because we just got out of like feats of snow last week. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try this, the slip one anyway. So remember, this is slip and this is the stroke and coat. Um, or like I said, you could definitely use these Mako underglazes. Um, I like these fundamental ones um, just because the Amco ones are a little bit more pricey, like the velvet underglazes are a little bit more pricey. And sorry, I thought I had somebody joining. There we go. Um, I find these to be a little bit more budget friendly, at least for my budget. So that might help as well. All right, so that's pretty good. This look, looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that slip side down onto my slab. The tricky thing with the designing is that, you know, you have to sort of work backwards with students. So you do the outline first, and then you do all the coloring in. And even for my high school students, they were kind of like, what? So I'm just gently pressing that onto my clay and letting it sit for a minute. This is where I take my roller. You can use either side. I'm just gonna gently roll over that. And you can see how the, the paper is sort of wet, but it's a little dry right here. So you could take, oops, a paintbrush with a little bit of water and get that section wet. Actually, I'm gonna go around all the edges here. A little bit of water goes a long way, so don't soak your paper. Um, 
I have had students try and take these off too fast. And because you soften up that the underglaze outline, it can get kind of smeary. So I like to leave it on there. The paper itself is a little, little shiny right now, so I'm gonna let it sit. I'll roll over it one more time. This guy, ooh, he's still really wet. So we'll give this one a second. You can also take the soft rubber rib. You can use, you guys, you can use, as I'm sure you know, like old credit cards and all sorts of stuff to um, use as ribs. Yeah, the printmaking rollers work great too. Good tip, Irene. This, the green one is a little bit more stiff and sometimes that can pull the paper. But, you know, the general wooden rib works just as well too. So I just do a little bit of pressure over it. One last roll and then let's see how this looks. This might be a little smeary, but again, I'm trying to work quickly. So see, it's kind of um, making that lime green underglaze a little bit smushy or smeary. I don't know if you guys can tell that. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this back down and just give it a minute. So if it doesn't transfer the best at first, you can always lay it back down and then just let it sit and wait for a second. Okay, this one's still really wet, unfortunately, but we'll go ahead and try it. Why not? Let's see. Like I said, you can always speed up the process with a hair dryer if you have that at school. Um, my high school students, sometimes I send them to the, the bathrooms and use the hand dryers in there. But equally, we have enough hair dryers. So since this one's kind of wet, I'm just like gently pressing, gently pressing. I don't want to like really rub over it because I know that that red stroke and coat um, was still so wet and I don't want to smear everything. So once I have that stuck on there, again, I'm gonna take my paintbrush and just go around the edges. I like going around the edges because usually if the edges are stuck down, then everything else is gonna transfer pretty smoothly. Just paint over all that. I'm going to cut half of this off. I know someone in the um, in the group too asked if you could just leave this on here and best fire. I have never done that, but um, I don't see why you couldn't if this was the only technique that you wanted to do. So normally I take these off and I add you know, more surface decoration to them and such. So I want to get them off. Um, also, if you find that the transfer isn't transferring well as you're pulling from one direction, just pull the other way. Yeah, this one's still pretty smeary and smushy. If it wasn't so wet outside, I have to work from my garage because that's where my studio is at. Um, If it wasn't so wet, if I could leave this on to dry a little bit, I don't want to bore you and literally have you guys watch paint dry. Um, you know, in here, this would all look a little bit better. And I'll hold this up to the camera for you so that you can see it a little bit better. So again, it's just sort of like smeary and smushy. There we go. And also I use that mint uh, slip so there's not a ton of contrast, but I promise it is <laughs> in the background there. The mint turns out this really great color. So this is the mint along the edge here. 
I always like to talk to students like about color theory as well. Um, you know, making sure that they they hit a little bit of contrast and um, visual movement with their projects too. Yeah, so that stroke and coat is way too smushy. So I would let that sit on there almost to like where the paper gets really dry. Um, once the paper's dry, I would take this and roll over it again. Um, you could even take your, your rib. Sometimes I'll even like um, burnish or buff it and then start to transfer and peel it away. Make sure the transfer is there. So if you, I mean, if you like that look, if it's still too wet, things aren't really transferring very well. I'm going to leave that there. So then after this, you know, you could go in and add, you know, another transfer or leaf. I've done this um, technique with big, long sheets of newsprint. And if you don't, you know, almost like roll it on there and smush out all the air bubbles, um, the slip or the underglaze doesn't necessarily adhere to your wet slip, or I'm sorry, your wet clay that well. And so that's where you might get the, the air bubbles underneath the slip or the underglaze, and that's when things start um, bubbling and popping off. So I have found that working in smaller sections like this um, has been more beneficial for me. So it's not to say that you can't have a flower with leaves or a bug with all the body parts or whatever sort of design idea that you want to do. I have just found that working in smaller sections, especially with this platter, um, you know, I could have drawn all of these leaves on one piece of newsprint and painted all of them and then transferred it on here. But instead I found that doing them individually worked a little bit better so that things didn't crack and bubble and pop off, like I said, so. So there's that. Um, yeah, that one's going to take a little bit time to dry. So I'll switch off my table camera and um, see if you guys have any questions. About anything, feel free to unmute yourself or if you want to ask in the chat, you can. Or is there anything more specific that I can show you? Hi, do you happen to have any um, more examples out in the garage <laughs> that you could show us? More examples? Oh yeah, hold on. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Let me grab a couple. What's the biggest benefit of the transfer versus direct slip tailing? Yeah, the question is, what's the biggest benefit? I'm gonna shut my garage, it's starting to pour. Okay, it's gonna get a little dark in here, sorry. So it says, what's the biggest benefit of the transfer versus direct slip trailing? Just the look. So yeah, I think it's just the look. I like it because I think it looks sort of um, almost like a printmaking technique. Um, I do like the slip trailing. I do include that in this. So yeah, it's a flatter vintage like look. Um, let me switch back to my table camera here. And um, you know, even after you did this flower, you could still go in with um, my, my pin and my pin cushion there. 
um, you could still go back in here and you know add some slip trailing or um, the underglaze trailing I don't know all sorts of stuff um, I like the look of both because I like the raised texture of the slips or the underglaze versus um, the flatness like you were saying What size of liner am I using? Um, honestly, whatever just came in the bottle. <laughs> so I get these, um, let me see if it says on here. So it's just these Mako designer bottle with writer tip. And um, Ellen, I didn't forget about you. I have my examples here. And you know, it doesn't say on the packaging, but I bet if you contact Mako, you could um, ask them. So it's pretty, it's pretty thin and it also comes with a pin that you can use to plug the top up of. Now these get really clogged sometimes, so I'll just soak them in water and then take an old paintbrush and go through and clean those out. This is pretty small. So maybe, I don't even know, maybe a 20 gauge and the pins just fit right down in there like that. So um, yeah, it's nice because then you can you can have your underglaze bottles, like your big bottles like this, and then just fill up your your own small bottles. Um, remember that you have to snip that with scissors and then those just twist on like that. I saved I have a bunch of these little caps. I don't ever use them after I put those on, but um, I don't know what you would do with them. You could take the, the tips off and then put those on. So there's that. Um, let me show you some more examples here. So I like doing those like, like slip, not they're, they're not slip transfers. They're underglaze transfers. So they're already like screen printed onto that really thin rice paper. And then I combined them. So here's some of the transfers that I did, like these mint leaves here. And then also this is um, this light purple is the slip that I got from Kruger Pottery. And I just love that it's just this raised texture. So it's a lot of fun sort of levels of surface design as well. And I think that, you know, that can translate well into any age group all the way from elementary to high school kids. Um, this is just one of the jars that I made. Um, again, these black dots are those, the underglaze transfers, and then the purple leaves are the slip transfers that I created. On the lid here, the, oops, sorry. On the lid here is just the red, um, the red designer liner that I went around and added some texture to it as well. Um, the clear glaze that I was using is very, like runs really, really a whole bunch with it. So here's another little jar and just these individual little, little flowers were the slip transfer technique. So there's a lot of, um, there should be some other sort of examples on my website, which is Amy Joy Pottery. Um, I've done this technique a lot with jewelry. So, um, and then you asked a little bit about firing. So after you do this technique, you bisque fire, right? So, you know, there's different ranges of bisque fire depending on where you're at in the United States or the, or the world. Um, I bisque fire to 04. And then after that, then like I said, then you could go back and you could apply other celadons or anything like that. I know, um, you know, for instance, if I wanted to not have the purple background, this is a, this is a slip. Um, you know, you could almost, after you bisque fire, you could wax over this and then dip it into your potter's choice or your celadons or something like that. So um, there's lots of versatility for what you can do. I would just, depending on the age group that you all teach, you know, 
have them experiment. What clear do I use? Um, I use the, um, I have it downstairs in my basement. It's the zinc free high fire clear and just like the big gallon of it. Yeah, HF9, something like that. I just know it's zinc free. Um, sometimes with the zinc, um, it'll craze and, and create those crackles. So I, that's why I like the zinc free one. So let's see if this one's ready. It doesn't quite feel there, but we'll try it. So I'm actually going to use this rounded edge just a little bit. Get in there and roll over it. I think it smushed all the red, but that's okay. We'll see how it comes out. Yep, so woo, way too squishy. The weather is not cooperating with me. But that one just, I can peel it off and can show you like what not to do. Um, Otherwise, you should have a nice, really clean transfer, but see how it's, the purple didn't necessarily transfer very well. It's very patchy. Um, I say very smushy just because it's smushy. So if that happens in your classroom, you can just always lay it back down and just give it some extra time to dry. I've had students just rip it off like a Band-Aid and then they're like, what happened? And I'm like, well, you didn't give it enough time. So then, What's fun, you can just wipe it off with a damp sponge. They can try again and um, work with it like that. If the kids made the transfers one day, um, they apply them the next day time-wise. So um, yeah, my school schedule has changed a little bit. So now we have longer class periods, but we, we were working in 40 minutes. So um, what you could do, right, with your piece of newsprint, just your dry newsprint, you know, you get like a 500 ream pack for $2 because it's so inexpensive, right? And you can have them, depending on what you're doing, um, you know, for instance, like that platter, I had multiple leaves, right? So they could sit here and draw out one leaf after the other. Um, it's always a good idea to make extra. So even if I knew that I only wanted three leaves, I would still make like six, sometimes even eight. So you could have them draw out all of their designs um, in one class period. Um, if that takes too long, then they could do the outline and blow dry it and then paint it in on the next class day. But I think it would be ideal for them to get it drawn out and then outlined. Um, all in one class day. Because when you outline with the underglaze, whether you're using the designer liners, if you're using the fundamentals, if you're using the velvets, whatever, remember these will um, stick to the paper a little bit better. So again, I use my sponge as my pin cushion because you don't want to lose those pins. And then the students could outline everything. If they want an outline, you know, they could just paint it with underglaze as well and let it sit for the day. And then whenever they come back to class, they could either fill this in with your underglaze, your stroke and coat or your slips or whatever you have, and then they could transfer it. Can you keep the dry transfers for a few days and then use them? Yes as long as you're using the underglaze for the outlines. If you use slip, the slip will dry and then it'll flake off. So uh, that artist that I told you about, Katie Miller, she, um, she has stacks and stacks and stacks of her slip transfers already in this stage where it's drawn and then outlined with her underglaze. And then she just pulls them from the shelf adds in her slip and then transfers them to her pieces. So you can get them drawn out. I mean, you wanna be careful because uh, at least my lines are so thin that you know they could still kind of chip off, but um, you know, they should 
be able to, you know, hang out for a couple of days before you use them for sure. And that's what I do too. I don't have stacks and stacks of designs, but um, at my studio at Fontbon, um, I have a lot. Here's another fun tray that I made. So the, the red lines um, are the slip transfer and everything else is just painted in the background. And then um, in St. Louis, we call them sprinkles, but I know around the US, um, they might be referred to as jimmies, but um, I use the sprinkle transfer sheet on the side. And this is what I'm talking about. The glaze that I have at my studio in, at Fontbon is very runny. So it, it took the color and made it drip down. Um, I find in the school setting that zinc high fire clear doesn't um, get away from you, from you as much, which is nice. So, um, have you all seen, have you guys seen this? Like these, this is what I'm talking about. Those, those rice paper under glaze transfers. Yes, love those. Okay, good. <laughs> is it easy for students to build their pieces with the transfers after applying? Um, you know, I mean, personally, I, I build all of mine and then do the transfers. So even if it's, um, you know, a jar shape like this, I'll still um, put my, my newsprint on there like this, right? And you could take a roller and sort of roll over that like that. You could, since this rubber rib is very flexible, you know, you could still go over it in all directions and then peel it off. So I, I think I would have students build, oops, I left some green on there, um, build first and then do their transfers. The project that I did with my high school students, I made, um, they cut out a small circle slab like this. I had them pinch around the edges to sort of lift it slightly so it's almost like a really shallow dish. They added a coil on the on the foot, you know, so we got how to roll out a slab, how to pinch a little bit, how to uh, roll a coil and slip and score. It's a very beginning project, but to sort of um, you know, level it up a little bit. The inside middle of the dish was the slip transfer. So they had a little piece of newsprint. They had a couple, like two or three circles on the newsprint. I cut out these circles so that they could trace the exact size, right? Their designs were really simple. You know, I said they could do something geometric. I said they could do something nature wise. You know, with high school, there's some girls that I teach all girls, sorry, I say girls. There's some students that come in with, you know, set ideas um, of what they want to do. And that's okay too. I always like to try and give students um, sort of a, a jumping off point of what they could do. So again, you know, one class time, they could brainstorm ideas, they could get all of their things drawn and possibly outlined. And then the next day, they could transfer it. I guess the full project would be like making it and then doing this and all that stuff. So yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think I finished the, the firing question and I'm sorry. So after I bisque fire, I do the, the clear glaze and then I fired a cone six. I don't know if I finished that. So hopefully that answers that question for you. So the, the WC609 by Laguna, the B-Mix is uh, I believe a mid fire range clay. And so, you know, to get it to temperature and to vitrify and all that stuff, I wanna fire it to cone six. So um, that's what I do. Any other questions? There's a cone five and high fire cone 10 B mix. Yeah, I use the mid range, the mid fire, only because I don't want to take my, my little electric kilns all the way up to, to cone 10. 
Did my school would kill me. <laughs> Plus, I don't, I don't ever, I don't have any projects that I feel like need to go to Cone 10. But that's okay. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. Again, like I said, I was just kind of knew I was going to uh, mess around in the garage for a little bit while my uh, my two year old was taking a nap and um, and thought, you know, just jumping on a zoom with whoever was interested would be would be helpful because I know I know we're all sort of treading water these days, or at least that's how I feel. <laughs> just trying to keep my head above water with everything going on. So um oh good i'm glad that it was helpful yeah katie's um katie's work in ceramics magazine was great yeah just to find her um this is how you i put i'm putting in the chat how you spell her name so katie miller and then somebody else um in that original post put a really helpful artist i think his name was arthur something his work is really fun and colorful and really whimsical i like it a lot it's arthur holverson <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So um, I realized I was like, oh, I need to follow him. And then I realized I was already following him. But, you know, with algorithms and stuff, you don't necessarily see their posts all the time. So perfect. Yeah, there's lots of artists out there. But at least for me, I know always seeing it in person kind of makes it, um, you know, that much better. And, and then you can ask questions and stuff like that. Um, what was Arthur's last name? Um, it was Holverson. Holverson. H -U mm -hmm. I'll type it out. Thank you. Yeah. Holverson. I'm on my iPad and I'm not very good at texting. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. Yeah. Holverson. I can, I can look it up really quickly on Instagram too. I think it's S E N. C N. Okay. I know I just searched for him. Halvors. Oh, I ooh, I definitely butchered his name. Here, I'll spell it out. <laughs> um, Arthur Halvors. There you go. Now it's in the chat for you. Yeah. Yeah, and I can I can pull his work up and show it to you guys this way. Too. So that's his. Those are his slip transfers, and you can see he does that on sort of like red earthenware as well which is super fun and then let me hop over here and i can show you katie miller i feel like holverson had an article in ceramics monthly or some kind of he was in one of the most recent magazines oh neat okay yeah so that would definitely be something to look at too i love katie she does a lot of um videos and posts um, through Instagram. And those are her transfers. And you can see how she's using the squeeze bottle to fill in those big areas. But again, you know, work with your budget and what you have and you can easily use a paintbrush and dish out all those to all the students. So there's some of her work. It's so cute. I love it. So, and she has a, a couple little boys. It's always fun to follow. And I don't know what it is with like ceramic artists and dachshunds, but she has a dachshund and I have a dachshund. So it's like kindred spirit. And she does some really fun jewelry, but um, here's her like sheets and sheets of un, um, already lined out designs. And then she's just going in and adding her slips to them. And she does lots of really awesome workshops through Instagram too, especially like mixing your own slips. If that's, you know, if, if that's your thing, I just like buying them bottled from Kruger here in St. Louis. Um, Cause I don't, I don't have the, the, the brain space or the time to do that. But um, you know, she's a, she's a working artist and um, she develops her own slips and her own colors. But again, like I said, this technique is so versatile that you can use it with slips, underglazes, Broken coats, whatever you have. So it's awesome. But um, 
reach out on Facebook if you have any questions, if you need, you know, any help like troubleshooting, if you do this project with your students and you find that they aren't transferring right or there's cracking or bubbling. Um, like I said, I, I was working on this um, process in um, my MFA program at Pompon, so I've sort of trouble, trouble shot, did all sorts of troubleshooting with the technique. So um, I'm more than happy to help and answer questions. I think especially now, you know, we all have to kind of like band together and, <laughs> and make life as easy as we can for all of our fellow art teachers. So I'm here to help in any way I can. Yeah. So, all right, well, thank you. Reach out. We'll see you guys on Facebook. <laughs> Bye.